I, I want to talk about the, the sort of three myths that prop up uh, the coal industry in America. And I, America is um, the sort of inflection point for it all because, first of all, we have lots more coal than anybody else. Um, and, and we're also the richest, most innovative country on earth. And if we can figure out a way to deal with coal or get off coal, that is going to have a huge impact on uh, the rest of the world. So I really think that the sort of technological and moral issues here in the U.S. are, are really uh, central. Um, and I'm going to talk about the three issues, the three myths that sort of prop up our dependence on coal in America here, which is that it's clean, that it's cheap, and that it somehow helps with energy independence. I grew up in California, in Silicon Valley. I worked at Apple Computer after college. Uh, I frankly had never seen coal until I was about 36 years old. I read about it. I thought, you know, coal was something that went out with top hats and corsets. It was something that you heard about in, in um, Charles Dickens' novels and things. I mean, I had this vision that electricity just sort of poured down from a golden bowl in the sky. You know, the electric bill came, it, I paid it, you know, whatever it was. I never gave it any thought. In the spring of 2001, uh, my editor at the New York Times Magazine called and said, have you seen the Bush-Cheney energy plan? It uh, looks like there's going to be a lot of coal uh, in America's future. You know, why don't you go look into this? And I was, I hesitated for about three seconds, and I said, sure, why not? And I didn't tell him that I didn't know that there, we were still burning coal at all, much less that it was going to be a big part of our future. Uh, so I jumped on an airplane and, and um, went to West Virginia and, um, you know, met with all the coal industry people like a responsible journalist does. and, and heard all about how important it is for our prosperity and for our economic future and, and you know, learned about how it's half of our energy in America, half of our electricity in America and how uh, the, the uh, coal plants are much cleaner than they used to be. But eventually I, I saw a drag line above, a, above a, um, a mountain and I climbed up and I looked down and I just saw and the ground was rumbling because it happened to be blasting. And I thought, oh my God, look at this. And, and then I started going around the coal fields, visiting towns and looking at the economic, um, you know, seeing these broken towns, seeing this sort of devastation. I'm like, where is this prosperity that everybody's talking about? If, if you know, if this is, coal brings prosperity, I'm, I'm, am I on the wrong road here? That really opened my eyes. I realized then, hey, this is what is, this is what's behind this whole iPod economy that I love. I mean, I worked at Apple. I, you know, I'm a big, you know, elect uh, I, I believe deeply in technology as a possible as a way of solving problems, of progress, and all that. But I, I'd never thought about what's where these electrons that we all love to celebrate really come from. And when I got there to West Virginia, it really opened my eyes to that. How long I spent working on this book, and I, and I you know, I, I came up with you know a lot of great factoids about. Average American burning 20 pounds of coal per day. Uh, that's how much we consume, but we don't ever know it because it comes in over the wire. But I really came to understand that it's really pretty simple that this whole coal dependence in America is propped up right now by three ideas. And that is, first, the idea that it's clean. And there's a lot of talk. A lot of Americans love the idea that we can use technology to make things better, that we can, you know, Clean coal is something like fat-free donuts. Uh, clean coal, when you look at the, just from the mining point of view, we saw that amply demonstrated here. Um, but the industry will always talk about how emissions have dropped by 80% say, since the 1970s when the Clean Air Act came in. In fact, the thing that we care about most and is most important is carbon dioxide. And from a carbon dioxide point of view, uh, coal plants uh, are, are only marginally more efficient. And in fact, a lot of the uh, the, the CO2 emissions are going up from coal plants. So from the things that we really care about, which is CO2, coal is not clean. And the, the technology that they have um, to go into the future is this thing called carbon capture and storage from coal gasification plants. I think it is um, not going to work. I think it's a political tool. It's a way that from the very first time I started talking to people about the coal industry and how it works, I kept hearing from the smart people in the industry uh, who I really trusted about what's called delay and fail. That's the strategy for how this industry keeps 
uh, thinks about new technology. Study it, study it, study it. Oh, it doesn't work. 20 years have gone by. Well, try this. Study it, study it, study it. 20 years. Meanwhile, you keep building the same thing, keep doing the same thing. And that, as I think, is what's going to go on with this idea of capturing and burying the, the carbon dioxide. Um, the second thing, the second myth is this idea that it's cheap. It's cheap in the same way that fast food is cheap. It's cheap if you don't consider all the other consequences. These are, those are mountains. Those are externalities. They're not mountains. They don't have people living in them. They don't have animals. They don't have trees. They're externalities. And they're not factored into the cost of coal. I love, my favorite thing about talk, is talking to coal industry guys and power industry guys is charts that show kilowatt hours price. They'll always show coal being here and gas being a little above and wind being a little above. And that's the, that's the whole context of the discussion. What is the kilowatt cost? And they really want to keep every, all the conversation right on that, not thinking about any of these other things like the mountains, like mercury emissions, like the fact that we're cooking the planet with, with coal. Um, but I, but I want to argue uh, with this idea of, of cheap that it's over. Coal is no longer cheap. That's an idea of the past. We're starting to see that happen right now. And the thing that's driving that are a number of things, but the simplest thing that's driving it is carbon dioxide price. Uh, everyone in America knows that there's going to be some kind of prices on carbon dioxide. But the, 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 the era of um, cheap coal is over. Everything about coal, from the cost of the power plants to the cost of the mining, uh, coal getting more deeply buried, more expensive to mine, everything about the cost of coal is going up, 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 up. And everything about renewable energy is going down, 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 down. So you have two intersecting vectors here. And I think that it's, and it's, and it's, they're about ready to cross right now. In fact, they probably have already crossed. And um, so the coal industry right now is really desperate to get a lot of mines open, power plants built, and all that before it becomes apparent to everybody else in the world that coal is a really expensive way to generate power, not a cheap way. Um, and, the, so the, and the last thing I want to, to, to touch on is this myth of energy independence. It's really crucial, and I, and I know from talking to people, um, that America's ignorance sort of about this matches my own prior to starting this, which is the coal industry is doing a great job of, talk, of exploiting the war in Iraq. They are doing a great job of saying, look, we, you know, we have soldiers dying overseas. We need to get off of foreign oil. We can't support terrorists and all that without ever telling anybody in America that coal and oil have nothing to do with each other. Oil is used for various purposes, as you all know, and including transportation, mostly transportation. Coal is used for electricity almost exclusively in America. There is no coal right now used to, to replace oil. Now, the coal industry would really like to do this. They would like to get this thing called um, liquefied coal. They can, they can make diesel fuel out of coal. And they would really like to um, get into America's gas tank. If there's any one aspiration, and the, maybe I think the biggest danger in, in going forward when thinking about you know, uh, how quickly we're going to cook the planet, not whether we're going to, but how quickly, is this idea of liqui liquefying coal. They say we need $8 billion or whatever their latest number is in subsidies and tax breaks to do this, because if we don't, you know, we might be vulnerable because we might run completely out of oil and our planes can't fly and we'll all be bombed and you don't want that on your shoulders, do you? So give us our $8 billion and let us um, liquefy coal to make diesel for the military. And they really want to get their nose under that tent to get into, like I said, America's gas tank. And this is a disastrous idea for many, many reasons, um, but particularly from a climate point of view. It's twice as carbon intensive to make uh, fuel out of coal than it is from petroleum, hugely water intensive. Um, it's really a major step backwards uh, in, in many ways. But that's what's going on. We have this great tipping point. We have other ways to do it. This is not 1950, you know? There are ways of generating power that don't require coal. We have large scale solar thermal stuff, we have wind, we have all kinds of things. There's, we're very getting very smart about energy. We don't need the, to you know, this 50s paradigm of just consume, 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 new coal plant, new coal plant, new coal plant, or America collapses is 
over. That's gone. And the, but that's the, the ideology that, that is driving the, the coal industry and that we have to recognize when we can get Americans to, and people in the world generally to wake up and see the dangers of this, that there'll be tremendous jobs, tremendous economic growth by replacing this aging 1920s infrastructure with smarter ways, cleaner ways, and cheaper ways of generating electricity. And, and I think that, that, that coal is one of the big um, blocks, is that no matter how you cut it, no matter how you spin it, no matter how you mine it, no matter what you do, no matter how fancy your technology is, I've looked at it from you know, every, every way. The, the, the simple fact is, is that coal is the fuel of the past, not the future. And the sooner we recognize that, the sooner we get off that, the better we will all be.